Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brian McIndoe. I'm the president and CEO of the Ryan Health Network. Welcome to our webinar to launch Ryan Health's Here For You online community resource hub. This week is National Health Center Week that celebrates community health centers and their roles in keeping people healthy. Today kicks off the week of webinars with the launch of this online tool that connects individuals with social services and support in New York City. We are excited today to be joined by council member Mark Levine, who's chair of the New York City Health Committee, who represents Ryan Health, West 97th Street, and Women's and Children. For over 50 years, Ryan Health has been proud to serve the community with exceptional primary care and specialty services. Uh, in 2019, we eclipsed 50,000 New Yorkers who received health care at one of our Ryan Health sites. It has always been a top priority for us to treat the needs of the whole person. We are committed to the patient-centered uh, approach that results in healthier, more satisfied patients. The six community health centers of Ryan Health are certified as patient-centered medical homes by the National Committee for Quality Assurance. This rigorous certification demonstrates that Ryan Health is committed to del delivering high quality healthcare using the latest clinical protocols providing the right care at the right time. Today, we take that commitment to the next level with the launch of Here For You, an online search engine that connects patients and the public to resources in the community to address the social and environmental facts that may affect their health. Conditions in the places where people live, learn, work and play affect health risk and outcomes. Factors that affect health include income, education, job, gender, race, neighborhood, exposure to crime, violence, and access to transportation. Approximately 40 to 50% of health outcomes are determined by behavior, while 20% are affected by social environment, which we'll hear more about shortly. Ryan Health also recognizes that the COVID-19 pandemic has a huge economic impact on New York City. New Yorkers have lost jobs, had their pay cut, or have to, had to stay home to care for loved ones or sick relatives. We realize that a lot of people are suffering. You will learn today how we are screening our patients for these risk factors and connecting them to resources through the Here For You resource hub to the services that they need. We want to address all the health and social factors that may affect our community's well being. I'm excited to introduce to you uh, Council Member Mark Levine, who, represents on, who is uh, represented on the Upper West Side by, council, by the Council Member. He has been a strong advocate for addressing inequality in New York City. As chair of the Health Committee and a New York City Council Member, he has led us through the COVID 19 pandemic for the resources New Yorkers need to survive this public health crisis. I am pleased he is here with us today to discuss the importance of having this new community resource for New, Yorker, New Yorkers during this time. Council Member Levine. Well, thank you so much, Brian. I'm really thrilled to be here with the whole Ryan Health family and also to be here with my incredible colleague, Carlina Rivera, who uh, of course chairs the hospital committee and has been just incredible throughout this crisis. Um, on COVID and so many other issues, and I know we'll be hearing from her shortly. Uh, I really believe in, in community health centers more than ever as a way to connect people who are getting left behind from the mainstream hospital system. And this horrible pandemic has really exposed the inequalities that require the work of community-based based health providers. We have seen devastating impact in black and brown communities throughout New York City people who were not getting adequate care before this crisis. And importantly, as you point out, Brian, people who suffered with things like poor housing, poor employment opportunities, poor access to healthy food. Uh, this pandemic has exposed those inequalities in really painful ways. And we've now got to do even more to tackle them. And uh, yes, health is about more than just straight up medical services. Health is about the kind of food you have access to. And in fact, we've seen in this pandemic that um, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, uh, all of which are driven by uh, lack of access to healthy food are contributing to vulnerability to COVID. So we've got to tackle them. We've seen that people who live in crowded substandard housing are more likely to catch the virus. So we've got to work on housing as well. We've seen that people who have essential jobs that don't give them time off, don't give them paid leave. They're out there getting the virus. 
uh, unable to isolate at home when they need to. So we need justice for workers, low wage workers as well. And I really want to commend Ryan Health for putting together this new website, which can help people in the community access the kind of help they need to, uh, to tackle these inequalities. And uh, I know this has been a tough period for Ryan, but we need you more than ever. We need primary care more than ever. We need preventative services more than ever. And uh, that's especially true uptown. Um, I'm really pleased to have uh, a major Ryan Health facility on 97th Street in my district. And I know you're active in other parts of uptown. You're really, really important to the community. I wanna thank you for the services you provide. And we're gonna fight with you to get through this horrible crisis so you can continue to provide the kind of frontline primary care rooted in the community that we need. Thank you so much, Brian, and thanks to everybody. Thank you, Councilmember Levine, and thank you for always being such a strong advocate for New York City and for Ryan Health. We appreciate it. Uh, we're also excited that uh, we also have with us today Count Councilmember Carlina Rivera. Um, she represents the Lower East Side. She has been a friend and supporter of the Ryan Health Nina site for many years, including the last three as our council member. Uh, in the council, she has fought for the affordability, affordability and livability of New York City by championing issues around affordable housing, small business survival, equitable health care, and transportation, which makes it so fitting for us to join with us today as we launch here for you. Council Member Rivera, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for these lovely introductions. They really are um really really nice to hear you know uh council member levine and i we we do a lot of work together but we honestly can't do it without the guidance and the support that you all provide so i want to thank you brian thank everyone who's on the call that i've seen that i've actually worked with in the past and seen a number of local spaces um our, our actually our partnership goes back even before i was a council man, member many people don't know that when i worked at good old lower east side I was a housing organizer, but I also organized around healthy aging specifically for older adults. And I knew that the first partnership that I wanted to cultivate was with the Ryanina Health Center in bringing in professionals who understood our community, who understood those social determinants that we speak about, kind of how we've been very historically underserved. If you speak English as a second language, if you're an immigrant, if you are someone who is very low income, and also to, so that person could have a culturally humble experience. Um, I think that's what's really important about what you can provide in addition to all of the services, um, but also letting people know that as we are trying to move forward into this kind of telehealth new world, we want people to have access at every opportunity. And I know that it will take some time um, for people, but that's what this fight has been really all about unity and us working together. So when I was working at Goals, again, we, we, we cultivated these partnerships. Um, and again, it was always to provide really the NYCHA families that are in my district. A lot of people don't know. I also represent 10,000 families right along the waterfront who are really, really dependent on the care that you provide. So I'm excited to be here this afternoon with my colleagues, with all of you to celebrate Ryan Health during National Health Center Week and to learn more about its Here For You tool. Uh, clearly tools are everything um, uh, that people need right now in terms of having opportunities and access and different options. Everybody learns differently. Everybody needs different kinds of care. I know that you've provided high quality, affordable care to countless District 2 residents, um, some of members of my own family who I've sent into your center to receive immediate care and then sit down with a, with a navigator to help them choose their options in terms of health insurance. Many of my residents are very, very, very low income who have borne the brunt of this pandemic. And over the last few months, we've really seen how social determinants of health, things like income inequality, uh, affordable housing, access to healthcare and education, and systemic racism drive patterns of morbidity and mortality. COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted the most vulnerable Americans, illuminated the pre-existing inequalities that populate all aspects of our life. Uh, my office is working to address these inequalities by delivering food, by conducting wellness checks, and focusing on legislation that really prioritizes access to health care. Um, it's always an uphill battle, but we are very, very lucky to have soldiers like you in the field with us. And I'm very excited to have Ryan Health as an ally in this fight. 
So, you know, your nuanced approach to care and focus uh, of health is critical to addressing health disparities at the community level and just ensuring that all New Yorkers have the opportunity to live happy and healthy lives. I passed by a number of your centers. I've been in quite a, a couple of them. And um, the people that you serve are ethnically and economically so, so diverse. And I think that really speaks a lot to our city and, and how you serve people. So I just wanna thank you for this opportunity and, and thank you all for the work that you've done, especially over the last few months. I think, you know, hospitals got a lot of attention certainly during COVID-19, but what people don't realize is that what you've done it really, really carried a lot of our communities, you know, in survival mode. So um, I know that I've been to one of your centers just recently to donate some PPE. I know that we're all still struggling and please know that I'll always be there for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Rivera. It's really appreciated. And thank you for joining us today and, and for your leadership on these issues. It's really, really uh, vital and appreciated. So let's get into the program. Um, I've, I'm gonna introduce you to three Ryan Health staff members, Amy Marie Irving, who's our quality improvement analyst, Jazdeep Chima, who's our Associate Director of Application Support and Development. Uh, Amy and uh, Jazdeep will be discussing the factors that can affect your health and demonstrate the Here For You online community resource hub, as well as Raina James, who's our Associate Director of External Relations, who will moderate our discussion with the Q&A after their presentations. Uh, just as a housekeeping item, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat box and Raina will pose them to our panelists after the presentations. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Amy Marie and Jazdeep. Thank you, Brian, for that. So as Brian mentioned, my name is Amy Marie. I am the Q one of the QI analysts here at Ryan Health. And so today we're gonna to talk about social determinants of health, explore what that topic means and see what Ryan Health is doing to make sure that our patients have access to the resources they need when they need them. So Brian brought up a few really interesting facts during his introduction. And I think it's important that we dive a little bit deeper into them. So the majority of your health is determined outside of the doctor's office. And so what this means is that 50% of health outcomes and how healthy your body is is determined by behavior. So what we eat, do we go for a walk today or put it off for tomorrow? Do we smoke or do we not smoke? Little decisions like this that we make every day, often without thinking too much about them, determine 50% of our health and how healthy we are. Another 20% is determined by our social environment. So our immediate surroundings, our community, our friends, family, our jobs, our school system, our income. And so altogether, about 70% of our health is determined by things that we often don't think of as being health related. And so it's really important that we start to look towards this 20, the 70%, especially our social environment, and see what we can do to help us make healthier decisions and live healthier lives. And so what Ryan Health really wants to do is we wanna make sure that we're addressing all of our patients' needs, including the majority of those needs, that 70%, that occurs outside of the doctor's office. So what is social determinants of health? Maybe you've read an article about it before, or this could be the first time you've ever heard the term. To break it down, it's a really formal way of saying that health starts at home with your family, friends, and loved ones. It starts in your community, at your school, your local bodega, your job. Your health starts with you. And it starts long before you visit your doctor or begin to feel sick. And so if we wanna to look towards how we create healthy individuals and healthy people, we have to look towards making healthier homes. And in order to have healthy homes, we have to have healthy communities. We really have to start looking towards that 70% of health that we don't often think about because our health is determined by so much more than just biology or traits that we inherit from our family and through the generation. And so this afternoon, we're really gonna dive deeply and look at how the conditions and the places where we live, learn, work and play affect our health risk and our health outcomes and what we can do about it to bridge that gap. And so one way I like to think about health is I like to think about it on three levels. 
the first level of your health is who you are. So this is your age, your sex, your ethnicity, your race. And this makes up about 20% of your health. And so even though that might sound like a small amount, it's still important. And this is why you go to your doctor regularly, you keep in contact with your care team, and you take your prescribed medications. Because who you are is important to your health. Your second level of health is what you do. So these are all those little decisions that we make throughout the day that we were talking about earlier. So your physical activity, what you choose to eat, do you drink alcohol, do you smoke? Decisions like this determine the majority of our health. And so this is why when you go to the doctor's office, they often talk to you about your diet, your exercise level, and other lifestyle changes that you could possibly make. Because what we do determines a lot of our health. And finally, that third level of health, that's your social environment. So that 20% we were talking about earlier. So the conditions where we're born, grow, live, and work. So this can be our community, our immediate surroundings, our environment, our exposure to crime and violence, our access to transportation, our school systems, our job, our income. All of this makes up our social environment and it determines about 20% of our health. And so altogether, as you can see, a lot of our health is determined by things other than biology. And it's important that we start to look towards that second and third level that what we do in that social environment. But one question that often gets asked is, why does it matter? Why does where I live or where I go to school or work, why does that impact my health? And that's a great question because we're not taught to think about health on this level. And so for a lot of us, it's a really new thought. But a couple examples about why this third level impacts so much is because this third level is really intermixed with everything we do. Where we live, where we grow up, what our job is, our income level, it can affect the decisions we make and who we are. And so one example of this is asthma. So for example, in areas that have a high air pollution level, so a lot of smog and smoke, infants and young children are at higher risk to develop asthma or have more severe asthma symptoms. And so in this example, we can see how where we're born can affect who we are. So being born in an area with worse air quality and more air pollution can affect our risk for asthma and our children's risk. Another example is food access. If you live in a neighborhood that doesn't have adequate access to food or even healthy food options, it can impact what we do, how we choose to eat. Oftentimes we make decisions about food based off what's convenient or what's least expensive. And if our neighborhood doesn't offer us good options, it can impact how healthy we eat. And so in this way, we see how where we live can impact what we do and the health decisions we make. An example I know we're probably all experiencing right now is exercise. Here in New York, there's not that many parks it can, and it can often be hard to find safe places outside to exercise. And especially during this pandemic when the schools and gyms are closed, I know we've all struggled in finding ways to get in a little bit of exercise every day. And so once again, this is an example of how where we live, living in a busy city like New York can make it difficult to exercise. So it impacts what we do. And so this is why your social environment is so important to your health because it impacts your health on so many levels, whether we're thinking about it or not. And so when people say social determinants of health, this is what they mean. They mean your social environment, so the conditions where you're born, where you grow up, where you live and where you work, and how it determines your health. So the social determinants of health. And so it's really important that we look towards this 20% and we figure out how do we address these conditions so that we can all live our healthiest lives. But it can often be kind of difficult. We can't simply pick up and move neighborhoods or change jobs in order to put us in better environments. And this is why it's so important that we have access to resources and organizations that can help us bridge that gap. 
perhaps transportation is difficult to find where you live, and that makes it hard to get to appointments or to go grocery shopping. This can impact your health on a large level, but maybe there's an organization nearby that provides free transportation to medical appointments or delivers groceries to your home. In this way, we can use community organizations and resources to bridge the gap where our social environment may often fail us. And the reason why this is so important to talk about is because everyone deserves to be able to live their healthiest life. And your life should not be impacted by social factors that are out of your control. And so by engaging with resources and community organizations, we can work to bridge that gap so that everyone can make the health decisions they want to make and have access to what they need when they need it. Because healthcare is a right, not a privilege. So what is Brian doing about this? So we acknowledge that it's really important that we start making conversations about social environment a normal part of our appointment. Because as you've seen, your social environment impacts your health as much as anything else does. So some of our staff members have begun outreaching to patients prior to their appointments. One, they probably reminded you that you have an upcoming appointment because we do hope to see all our patients soon. And second, they asked you if you had time to answer a short questionnaire. This questionnaire allows our staff member and your care team to better understand what resources in your local area you might benefit from most. The questionnaire is four to seven questions long and the questions range from, what is your current housing situation? Are you worried about losing your housing? In the past year, have you or any of your family members you live with been unable to get any of the following when it was really needed, food, clothing, utilities, childcare, medicine, healthcare, a phone? Has lack of transportation kept you from medical appointments, meetings, work, or forgetting things for daily living? The answer to these questions are all confidential. So we're not gonna share your answers with anyone. We treat it the same way we treat any other health information you give us because these questions in your social environment is just as important to your health as anything else. After completing the questionnaire with our staff member, they'll work with you to find resources and organizations in a zip code of your choice. So maybe near your home, or maybe you're interested in what's near your job. And they'll find organizations that fit your need that you're interested in and comfortable with working with. And then, we'll send you a list of those organizations. They can send it through text or email, but they'll also reach out to some of those organizations and let them know that you're interested and ask them to reach out to you. So in this way, you don't have to worry about taking that first step. The organization can reach out to you, explain the services they offer and how you might benefit from them. And during this process, your care team stays involved because it's important to your health. So if at any point in time you have questions or maybe you forgot a resource, you can reach out to your care team and get that information. And so in this way, we can really work to use these organizations and resources to create healthier homes by bridging that gap where our social environment may sometimes fail us. But it's important that our patients don't have to wait for us to reach out to you. So today we're launching our Here For You platform which you'll be able to access from our homepage. What this platform does is it allows you to look for resources and organizations that you find helpful at your fingertips. So from your phone, your laptop, or your tablet. You can pull up our website, go to our Here For You search engine, and quickly look and see if there's any resources nearby that you might be interested in. Perhaps you're at work and you're curious to know if there's a food bank nearby or if there's any legal support or educational support nearby, you can pull out your phone, go to our website and search and see what's in the immediate area. And so in this way, you can get the resources you need when you need them without waiting for us. And so hopefully by starting to engage with these organizations and these social resources, we can work towards creating healthier lives, healthier homes and healthier communities. And so now I'm gonna hand things over to Jasti and she's gonna actually demo the Here For You platform 
and tell you a little bit more about its capabilities. That way you can see how easy and convenient it is to use. Thanks, Amy Marie. I'm Jess Deep and part of the and part of the application support team at, here at Ryan. And next, I'll review Ryan's Here Free website. As Amy Marie mentioned, connecting patients with social determinants of health is important to bridge the gap to improve health and reducing disparities, but it's hard to navigate the system. Thousands of nonprofits and social care providers serve their communities, but for most people, navigating the system to get help has been difficult, time consuming, and frustrating. One way we can empower our patients is by sharing information. At Ryan Health, we've developed the Here For You social care network. People want to help themselves. Our Here For You platform allows self-service navigation and sharing of information on resources within the social care network. This allows anyone anywhere to find and apply for programs. Anyone can access this database of programs at hereforyou.ryanhealth.org or simply from the link on our website at ryancenter.org. Let's get into how easy this is. So I'm just going to share my screen. As I mentioned, two ways to get to this platform are from ryanhealth.org and once you're on our webpage you can scroll to our here for you announcement and this will this will take you directly to the link mentioned earlier here for you .ryanhealth.org. you could access this link directly or Go from our website on the home page. Let's go over how simple it is to get into the to get the resources you need. This process requires three simple steps. Step one requires that we enter a zip code. I'll enter 126 since I'm here on the Upper West Side. Again, I want to point out that this will allow users anywhere across the country to search for programs within their particular zip code whether it's here in New York City, upstate, or even in South Dakota. So let's click on search. Here, you can see the number of programs available to serve people in this particular zip code. That was step one. Step two requires that we browse for a social service program across the service categories. These are the service categories listed above. Perhaps I'm interested in food delivery. I could hover over the food service category and select food delivery. I'm able to apply filters. Perhaps I'm searching for programs for low income and it's an urgent need. So I'll check off emergency. I can also apply program filters specific to the program itself. Let's say I'm looking to verbally call a food delivery program that is open now, is free, and can communicate with me perhaps in Spanish. I'm able to apply this filter and search for programs. As you can see, our filters yield two programs. I can sort my search by how relevant the program is or by distance. I'll select closest since we're in Manhattan and likely we'll have to walk to programs closest to us. You're able to get additional details on the program by clicking here on more info. Here, you can learn more about the program details, such as eligibility, the availability, the description, cost, next steps involved, hours, and so on. You can save this information for yourself. This will require that you create an account or you can share it. You're able to share it with yourself or someone else via an email 
or a text, or you can share this program on Facebook. The last step of this process is to connect with the particular program. Here on this program, we can click on next steps and this will distinguish the best way to connect with this program and how, how to initiate the next steps. As we can see from our filtered program search, in order for me to connect and get food delivery through emergency meal box, I would just have to simply call them and be provided with the appropriate resources. That was it. As you can see, this is a quick three-step process that allows anyone anywhere to search and connect with social service programs. If anyone needs a food pantry, help with their electric bill, legal assistance, or transportation to the doctor's appointment, you simply just have to enter a zip code in Ryan Health's Here For You social program platform to unlock information to programs that are available. Searching for programs is quick and simple. Again, all I need is a zip code. Let's search for 1009 for the Lower East Side. Ryan Health's Here For You platform is a tool available to help people find resources they need quickly with dignity and ease. Here in the money category, I can search for programs that may help pay for childcare, may help pay for food, and also provide additional service categories for disability benefits. If, if I wanna look for particular resources to assist with the cost of medical supplies, I can also search by keyword. So you have two ways to search. You could use these service categories or search directly within this field by a keyword. For example, if I want to look for resources to assist with the cost of medical supplies, I can search by keyword medical, let's look for it, medical supplies. Again, we're getting from our keyword search in this zip code 1009, here are the programs that come with medical supplies. We can apply program filters as reviewed earlier. And we're, again, if we need to communicate, find programs in Spanish, we have that listed here from our filter from before. We're also able to translate this entire page. So if I'm not, if I speak, you can see from here, there's a list of other languages. So all of this search feature can be translated. As you can see, the list is quite comprehensive. And selecting that allows me to have the entire Here For You resource page translated. But remember, if I need to find programs based off of a particular language to communicate, that would be the filter within the program filter in this tab. Let's just go back to English. So here's a list of programs that came up from my search for medical supplies in 1009. We have relevance and we have closest. Again, I'm going to filter by closest. And here we have options out of programs that come up. Again, I can either share or save this program. As we reviewed earlier, you can share with an email, you can send a text, or you could post on Facebook. Saving the program requires the creation of an account. With this feature, you can contact or refer directly to the programs and save the program as a favorite. I'll just log in with my account so you could see some of the favorites I have. In the 
the current COVID environment, it's easy to feel lost and not know where to look for help. There are people who never thought they would need to search for any programs. There is an immense change in categories of people searching for things, and this is being updated and the network is always growing. With schools reopening to some extent, you can find programs related to education. You could find programs here that are listed perhaps with clothes for school, books, school supplies, or perhaps in this current environment, I lost employment. I can search to learn in this work service category, a new skill, perhaps I need some basic computer literacy, um, perhaps something related to resume development. You have access to either getting these programs from these service categories or always doing that simple keyword search. Another example of a keyword search that we could do is perhaps help pay for internet. Let's see what comes up. As you can see, again, in this 109 zip code search, doing a keyword search of help paying for internet, I have these nine programs that came up. Verizon seems to have something going on, as does this other program at Xavier Mission. Comcast has a program as well. So from here, clicking on more information, again, will give me the details of the program. I'm able to save this program, share it, and clicking on apply will take me into the next steps of applying for something unique as getting assistance with internet. Because as we all know, COVID changed the way we do internet. So Ryan Health's Here For You social, social service platform is here for you or someone you know when the need arises. It's quite intuitive and it's as simple as three steps, a zip code search. So any zip code, then we find our program and then we just either apply and learn next steps. It's that simple. So this platform is always available on our website at ryanhealth.org or at hereforyou.ryanhealth.org. And it's always available for someone you know when the need arises. For our next discussion point, should we jump into the Q&A? Sure. Okay, so we actually have a few questions that came up. Really good questions. A question that came up and this might be for Amy Marie and Jazz. Can I use this site to get healthcare assistance that let me see that lets me see a doctor at Ryan Health? Yeah, I could take that question. So the Here for You site is really supposed to connect our patients with outside organizations or other resources to kind of help with those social needs. If you're looking to make an appointment here at Ryan, which please do, we're open for both telehealth and in-house appointments. You can either call our general number, 212-749-1820, or if you're already a Ryan Health patient, you can log on to your MyCare portal and book an appointment without having to talk to anybody. So Here For You is not used to make appointments with Ryan, but you can call us or log into your care portal to make an appointment with us. Awesome. Another question that came in, how is the information on the Here For You resource platform updated to stay current? I'll take that one. So the information for all the programs on the Here For You resource platform are validated twice a year. So uh, twice a year, each program is reached out and it, um, a database goes through the search and we verify the phone number and that the services are still available as well as the contact method and the address. Awesome. Are there eligibility requirements for the services that are found on the hub? Some 
programs do have particular eligibility requirements. Perhaps a patient has to be in a particular um, income bracket. It all depends on the program. So if it's for low um, income patients, you're able to use the income eligibility, or when you're searching through the filters, you could see if it's free or reduced cost. Um, but a lot of the resources and the programs, it's not geared to say you need to have a particular um, requirement in terms of demographics. It's just here as a resource for you to connect to programs. Does that answer the question? I think so. Um, does Here For You cover all five boroughs? Yes, Here For You covers all five boroughs and all these zip codes, whether you're here in New York City, in, in the Bronx, or even in like South Dakota, any zip code across the United States will work to find a resource. Okay, um, just a few more questions. Is there a lot of competition for these programs? Where, will their services be full? A lot of the programs, um, again, it depends on how specific it is, your search and which organization you're reaching out to. Um, so one of the nice things about this is that you're able to contact the program directly. So if you need to call them, email them or visit, you're able to apply this filter as well as receive the next steps directly from the program to know how best to either apply and, or connect. So knowing if the service is available or not, again, this tool helps you know how best to connect and get that next, um, get the information. Creating an account where you save it, allow, depending on the resource, will allow you to either generate a referral and communicate directly with the organization, but a lot of that require, depends on who the organization is. Okay. Just scanning through to see if we have any more questions. Does this, a question just came in, does this also work with international searches? Um, as of now, no, this is only for the United States. Okay, another question came in, and I think they may want you to just show us again, but it says, how do we sign up for the services that are in that are available in our area? Is that on the website? Sure. So again, if I go back to our resource um, hub, hereforyou.ryanhealth.org, and let's say, let me just do another demonstration. Searching in our zip code. If you need to sign up for a particular program, so let's look for foreclosure counseling, perhaps. Based on the program, you can get the more infor you can go to more information and learn more about what the next steps are, the costs associated and contact the program directly to know specifics of that particular program. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions. Let's see. Okay, nope, I think that's it for the questions. Raina, we're done with the questions? Yes, we are, Brian. Thank you, Raina. Thank, uh, and also thank you, Amy Marie and Jazz Deep uh, for the presentation um, and Raina for moderating the discussion. Uh, and I would like to once again, thank council members Levine and Rivera for joining us today, um, taking time out of your busy schedules. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And most importantly, thanks to all of you who joined us today. We hope you found this pr presentation helpful. Um, we invite you to join us for other webinars being held this week for National Health Center Week, which are available on our website, ryanhealth.org. 
thanks again and hoping everybody has a great rest of their day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.